Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of Emigrate Open Day. Today, it's all about open consultation. Uh, this is something we do in the Emigrate community from time to time, where we allow our members of our community uh, to ask questions and get answers to things that may be bothering them, things they may not be clear about, things that may not be so clear to them around the different tech-enabled visa opportunities that are available, around what they are supposed to be doing in terms of their roadmap, around if they already qualify or if they still need to put in some more work, and even if they need to put in more work, what exactly do they need to do at every point in time? Where you get to ask questions around requirements, where you get to seek clarification. Emigrate's Open Day is also where we try to inform and also inspire our community to understand that these opportunities exist and they exist for people like them. The different countries of the world are looking for talent and they are looking for talents who are able to add value to their economy, to their polity. And that's what Emigrate is all about. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're connecting from all over the world. Just to make sure I'm not speaking to myself, I know you are not able to unmute yet. Uh, but if you could just pop in the chat, if you can hear me and if you can see my screen, I would appreciate just to be sure I'm audible and that you can see my screen as well. Welcome. Welcome for those of you joining us. Welcome. I can see us getting in already, connecting our audio. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Okay. So Emigrate is... And tonight, what we'll be doing is we will start by me just giving a quick introduction around what emigrate is, what emigrate is not, and what we are seeking to achieve by creating this community and this, this, this service itself. After that, we will open up the floor to, I mean, the open consultation session where you can choose to come up stage and ask your question. Um, we ask that you please switch on your camera if you want to ask a question. We would also mention up front that this session is being recorded. And so please do not share anything that is, I mean, uh, private, but you can ask specific questions that is personal to you, but please do not share private information when you ask uh, those questions. But we'll get to that very shortly. So Emigrate is Tech Enable Pathway to Relocation and Settlement. I've already explained that today is the Emigrate Open consultation session. So we'll not be having a guest uh, today. Instead, we'll be interacting in terms of questions. We've also explained that we have a lot of different videos of different open days where different people who have been acknowledged as global talent, exceptional talent, global impact talent, and so on in different economies have come to share their story so that you understand that it's not magic, so that you, you get inspired, but more important that so that you take action. We ask that please watch some of these videos because they are useful for you to understand uh, what exactly is available to you all over the world. It's no longer a cliche that the world is a global village. Instead, you should understand that you have the opportunity once you are able to show the right combination of experience, exposure, and skill, if you're able to show the right combination, you have your choice of countries from all over the world. These are some of the countries that offer different kinds of visas, startup visa, tech visa, digital nomad visas, and so on. We were speaking last month around the Tech Nation visa, and we'll just bring to the attention of our community that there has been a few changes in the, in the requirements. One of them is something that we already entered you last month that was going to happen. I can say to you now that it is live. And I guess you heard it first in the Emigrate community. And that's why you should stay connected to the community because we get information that you may not get or you may not get quickly. The major one that affects some of the members of our community is that 
instead of asking for two examples of innovation for exceptional promise, they now require only one. Only one is what is required moving forward. And that should be something that some of us may be excited about because some of us may already have one example of digital, you know, digital technology product, particularly one that is innovative, particularly one that adds some sort of traction. So please catch up with this. Several other changes have been made in October and um, I won't have enough time to go through some of those changes as well. Um, yeah, so what we do at Emigrate is we help you become globally attractive. And there are two ways around that. One is you having a globally attractive tech profile as an experienced techie, or you have a globally attractive tech enabled business, typically a digital product, a startup. What we say is that the visa itself is only a side effect of something which is much bigger. The visa is just a stepping stone because these countries are not doing you a favor. Instead, they want you to do them a favor. They want you to choose them. Uh, there's a new advert that the UK government, for example, has uh, started running on television at airports and all of that, saying choose the UK, because they know that if you're a talent, everywhere in the world is open to you and you can choose where you want to work. You can choose where you want to live, even if you work somewhere else. You can choose where you want to bring your innovation, your patent, your earnings, and so on to. And this is the reason why they want you in their economy, but only if you are globally attractive. And that's exactly what we help you become in the emigrate uh, community. They are not doing you a favor at all. They know you are going to pay taxes to the economy. They know that you are going to create jobs or you are going to attract of, um, you are going to attract investors that will create jobs. They know that you are going to help some of the companies that are indigenous to them to grow bigger and so on. Those, that talent is what the countries are generally looking for. That, that, and that is something that you possess. And that is something where they've opened doors for you to come um, to, their con, con, uh, to their countries. Emigrate. At Emigrate, we do a lot of things for free and we encourage our communities to take advantage of all the different things available for free. First of all is information and inspiration. And part of that is why we do the monthly open day and we're committed to it, even though it is free. We also do, we also host the Emigrate community, which is in two forms at the moment, on WhatsApp and also on Telegram, where you are able to ask questions uh, we don't open the community all the time. We only keep it open from time to time during the month, but we do have a premium community and I'm coming to speak about that later as well. The op monthly open days are free as well. We also have introductory videos. We have the Emigrate Open Consultation, which we'll be doing today, where you are able to come on stage and ask questions on, on what anything that is bothering you specifically. And also we have the short inquiry um, sessions where you are able to book a 10 minute private short inquiry session with one of our emigrate consultants, our emigrate coach. And what you are able to do with that session is ask specific questions that may be specific to you, that may be private and so on. The key thing is that we are only able to do one short inquiry session per person. And so we ask that you use it wisely. We ask that you consume all the free information available first before you then come for that short inquiry session. So you are not wasting the 10 minutes asking what is emigrate, what visa is available. All of that are things that we answer during the open day. And then you can ask more specific question um, to you yourself. We also have premium services. And so we do a lot of things for free, but premium services are existing as well, including the Emigrate Circle, which is a premium community. We also have personalized consultation. We have the standard package, and we have the Emigrate Premium Service, which is a one to two year journey. And that's my favorite because it's handled in over a period of time. For Emigrate Services, it covers a lot of different things. If you are trying to apply, for example, we spoke about technician a few moments ago. If you are trying to apply for that visa, we always advise that you get someone to work with you on the visa. Um, and um, it doesn't have to be paid. You can get a 10 minutes consultation and things like that, but also you can um, just ask for help. You, uh, as much help as possible. We do coaching and handholding. 
um, if you get rejected, for example, and you need to do endorsement review, those are the kinds of services we have available. Also at Emigrate, we can help you with a roadmap, a roadmap to you becoming globally attractive, either with your tech profile or with your tech enabled business. Uh, either a self-directed roadmap, or if you want something a little bit extra, being part of the community, and also taking the journey with other people who are also on the same track and the same pathway as you. These are some of the things that are available in the emigrate community. In addition, we have other services within the Bincom Dev Center, who is the host of, um, that company is the host of emigrate at this point. Even though in the future, we hope that emigrate will become its own startup focused on helping Africans become globally mobile, globally attractive. Some of the other services with Bincom Dev Center is the Bincom Global Tech Program. It's a one to two year program <clears throat> that starts from the beginning where you learn skills, have the relevant skills that you need within the tech space. You gain experience on real life projects and then you gain the right exposure as well um, in the field of technology. In, um, in terms of the price, it's 1.2 million for the, for the cost of the program. However, the company has something called the income sharing agreement, which is why we're able to say learn tech now, pay later. With the income sharing agreement, what happens is that you will not pay your fees now, you will pay your fees when you start earning a high paying job in the field of technology. And so the company is basically investing in you. It gets more interesting because the emigrate premium I mentioned earlier is actually incorporated into this program as well. It's good for you if you have, you have zero years of experience in, in tech or zero years in terms of skill and you want to build that skill. It's also good for you if you have the skill, but you don't have the right experience, you've not worked on real life projects, you've not been exposed in the right way, the Bincom Global Tech Program is, is fantastic for you as well. In addition, for those of us that are many years, who have many years of experience in tech, one of the ways you can show yourself as being globally attractive is by mentoring. And Bincom has a fantastic mentoring platform, which was launched last year, the Bincom Mentoring Platform. And with that platform, you are able to have a formal mentoring process, which is part of what you can submit as your evidence of being globally attractive. Emigrate is built for you. If you are in tech, you are passionate about what you do, because if you are not really passionate about tech, you will be frustrated. And But when we say tech, we are not just saying the technical side of tech, but also the business side. So there are many opportunities for project managers, product managers, digital marketers, and several of those as well. There are opportunities for invest, investors as well. And if you sit on the board of a company, right? So it gets interesting because one of the changes in the Tech Nation one, for example, is that they've added to say that if you sit on the board of a startup, you qualify. But the startup obviously needs to have very good traction. But yeah, it's also there now as one of the, if you're a board member, and also for some of us that are 20 years experience in the field of tech, what's stopping you from being part of the board of a high traction startup at this point in time? My point here is that there are several opportunities available depending on where you stand. How it started for us was to solve a problem. Where we are today is we focus on information, sharing the right information, coaching, handholding, strategy, consultation, advisory, and also building a fantastic community for people, like-minded people like you, who are interested in taking, or taking advantage of the opportunity. We know that many people out of Africa, particularly, um, Nigeria is where our company was founded, but we increasingly are having clients from all over Africa as well. But we know that a lot of times when you say the word immigrant and you say the word expatriate, we don't realize that there's just one key difference between the two of them. And it's the fact that where you are traveling from, if you are going from one side of the pond to the other, you are called a certain name. But if you are going the other way around, you are called a different name as well. You should think about that and all. For some of us, you may want to take a screenshot of this slide and Google them because 
This is the information about each one of these visas are available in the public domain. But part of what we do in Emigrate is to bring more information, bring people's unique experience, bring information that you will not have been able to see in the public domain in the first place, bring information about people that have applied and taken the journey, and also help you with that journey by itself as well. There's a startup visa in the UK, there's a global talent visa. In the US, there's the O1A EB2 visa. There's the EB1 visa as well in the UK. And there are several other countries that have different types of visas for you as a techie, if you are able to meet specific requirements. Across the spectra, there are different visas that you will be targeting depending on where you are. So if you have zero years of experience in tech, the visa you should be targeting is different from if you already have 10 years experience in tech, you are probably already an exceptional talent. You may, you may already qualify, or if you put in a bit more work, you would actually qualify for some of these opportunity. And this is part of what we do. And that's this part of what we help with, with um, Emigrate. Also bear in mind that there are different visas available. Some are available to you as an individual because you are a skilled individual. Some are available to you because you're a founder or you're a key executive in a tech-enabled business. So, and it depends on your profile that will determine which one you should probably take a look at. I've spoken for a while now, and I'm looking forward to hearing from our uh, community. I'm looking forward to answering questions. I'm looking forward to us being able to understand what you need and so on. So that being said, Welcome again. Welcome to Emigrate Open Consultation for, for this month. How this will work is um, if you're interested, if you would like to ask a question, uh, please raise your hand. You also need to switch on your video or else we cannot put you on stage on the spotlight. And then um, we would basically ask you to unmute yourself. You can ask your question and we can have an interaction around whatever specific question that you do um have and so welcome again welcome everyone as uh, i forgot to introduce myself my name is Badi adesha um co-founder and cto for social lender amongst many other things as well welcome 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 uh, uh, i see a hand up already but you need to switch on your video i will not be able to spotlight you if you do not switch on your video welcome Welcome. I would also remember remind our audience that this is being recorded as well. So please do not share private information. But if you need clarification on anything, if you need to understand something better, if there's something we've said or one of our um, guests have said that you are not quite sure about or you are not quite clear about, uh, you can ask during this session and several others along that way. Uh, welcome, welcome. Um, okay, so I see one hand up now. I'm going to be adding you to Spotlight uh, now. And then I'll ask you to unmute as well. Um, I'm trying to uh, put you on Spotlight. What's going on? Um, give me a moment. Um, I'm trying to get your. Um, okay, your video is not on. That's the problem. I can't put you on spotlight if your video is not on. And so please switch on your video. Um, I see your hand up, but your video is not on. Uh, we can't put you on spotlight if your video is not on. All right, I see you on video now, so I can put you on spotlight now. Fantastic. Um, and then I'm able to ask you to unmute. Okay, so you've unmuted already. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, I am. Um, You're welcome. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah, I'm Pomili. Hi, Pomili, how are you doing? Um, for yeah, other people, if you would like to get on this stage, uh, please just raise your hand so we'll take it as, um, as we see your hands up on Zoom. Hi, Pomili, please go ahead. So my my question is um, for me. Um, I I started um, I started um, tech um, early this year, and okay. I'm passionate about it. So I'm, I'm aspiring to become a software engineer. 
So um, I switched from sales. I'm a sales expert, so I switched from sales. <clears throat> so presently, I have been able to do some few projects on my own, just learning, learning. So I've not really had a professional um, experience. So, and I, my, my basic question is, what is the requirement for the um, learn tech um, pay later? So that's my question. What are the basic requirements? So I'm actually interested in that. Oh, okay. So you're asking about the Bincom Global Tech Program, right? The yes. main tech now pay later is one of the payment option. Um, I need to, um, for that, for the program. What's the requirement for the program? You need to apply for the program and go through our um, interview process. The key thing we want to know is if you are able, you'll be able to cope, if you'll be able to dedicate 40 hours a week because you require that much time for you to do all the things that is required of you. If you will be able to adapt, can you even speak English um, in the first place? Can you write English? Can you, um, and then depending on the programming language or career path, because we have career paths like uh, Python, PHP, uh, Python and data science, um, infrastructure and DevOps, project management, digital marketing, there are several of them. Right, and we want to just be sure that you are ready to commit to your growth because the company will be investing in you. We would not be making money um, until when you start earning high pay. I mean, you start earning high salary in the field of technology, and so we want to know if it's going to be worth it investing in you based on your zeal to learn and so on. You can come as an absolute beginner. You don't need to, so there's no programming test or anything like that. We will take you through all those training from foundation, HTML, CSS, if you're interested in programming and so on. Yeah. But do you have the zero? That's actually the key yes. thing. I, I actually, I've, I've even built a portfolio web on my own with HTML, CSS. Currently, I'm working on a JavaScript, um, JavaScript project. So, so you uh, need to take it one step further. You can't say that you build those things and they are not online and real people are not using it. So mm. you need to take it one step further. You just okay. building them on your local host is not what you don't even, it's not what people are looking for in Nigeria. Not to talk I actually, I actually tried to publish one on, on a web. So, but it's still a learning stuff. So, exactly. so I just you need move, I'm, you I'm move passionate away. about it. So. Exactly. So I'm, I'm just, glad you yeah. mentioned that you need to move away from just the learning stage to a point where you have the right experience yes. and you have to have the right exposure as well for the global tech program. And so part of the yeah. global tech program is the emigrate premium, as I mentioned, and we prepare you for these opportunity that I've mentioned, particularly the Tech Nation exceptional promise track. So within a two year period, you should be able to qualify for the Tech Nation exceptional promise track only, but only if you put in the work. You need 40 hours a week, and there's a lot of work you will need to do. You will need to put yourself out there. You will need to learn the right skill at the same time. I, I won't do more than 40 hours. Yes, so that that that's it. Okay. And this so what what is there a link uh, I can I can the, the link can, can, can you send me the link? What, what? Yeah, so you can just so I can just indicate interest on that link, and then they will send you a link. But we'll also probably drop it in the chat as well. Hopefully, one of my colleagues right. put the link in the chat. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah, thank you, Kwamele. All right. Um, so if you would like to ask a question, any question at all, he was asking around the Global Tech Program, which is a different uh, program from what we are talking about today, but it's interrelated because the Emigrates is actually an add-on to the trainings we have on the Bincom Global Tech Program. Okay, so you can just raise your hand. It's the Emigrates Open Consultation. Uh, you need to raise your hand, but you have to switch on your video for us to be able to put you on stage. Uh, once you do that, uh, we'll be able to put you on stage. So I see someone. Uh, who, okay, so Caleb is first. So I'm going to be putting Caleb on the spotlight now. Uh, please remember that this is being recorded as well. So ask questions that is not um, private, but it can be personal. Um, okay, so I need to ask you to unmute. 
You should be able to unmute yourself now, Caleb. Yes. Hi. Hi, Caleb. Hi. How are you doing? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, my question is that uh, I, I am a network engineer and I've been trying to get a job in the uh, UK, uh, sorry, US or Canada. So uh, I don't know how you guys can help in regards to that, you know, getting, securing a job offer and, uh, you know, in line of uh, networking or, you know, systems engineering. Uh, Caleb, have you heard of DevOps? DevOps, yes, yes. Um, uh, Are you a DevOps engineer? Not really. I'm planning to get into DevOps, but uh, uh, right now I'm not. I'm not here. So, Caleb, you need to get into DevOps or cloud hosting, cloud engineering very quickly. Yes. The problem yes, that you have I, I, is I, I, that yeah, if if you say that you are doing infrastructure and network, right, and what you are doing is connecting cable and all of those kind of things, the world has moved on. The world moved on maybe like five, six years ago, right? You need to then be able to adapt that skill to the virtual environment that people are using now. 10 years ago, it was a lucrative business to be able to build data centers. And of course, for you to build data centers and manage data centers, you will need network engineers uh, that are CCNA, CCMP, and those kind of things. Now, those rules are scarce. I'm not saying they do not exist, but they are scarce. And because they are scarce, you would need to get a higher level of experience for you to be able to qualify. Do you know what BGP is? Do I know what? BGP, do you know what that is? Yes, but I'll get you out of Fantastic. You would have to be working with BGP, not just a regular router. Those are the kind of skills people are looking for right now at that level, and that is scarce. However, you can adapt your skill to DevOps because it's the same thing. Rather than you connecting physical cable, you are able to connect the cloud infrastructure and all that. And I can tell you for free that there's a scarcity in that um in that field at the moment the the world is looking for azure engineers the world is looking for aws engineers the world is looking for google cloud so, so actually I, I i am i am in that line now as far uh, are you an expert cloud. in that line sir? i'm still i'm still you need to become uh, an expert in that line what, oh. what i'm saying to you sir you need to become an expert in that line. And then you will see that recruiters will be looking for you, not the other way around. Right? Okay. If, that, that's what you will see. And you, you can even get a remote work while you are in, are you in Nigeria or Ghana? I'm in Nigeria. In Nigeria. While you're in Nigeria, you can even get remote work where recruiters will be looking for you. But they will only be looking for you if you have the right skill. I mean, you can lie and say, I have the right skill, but they will take you through different levels of exams and tests and all of that, just to make sure you have the right skill. Once they find that, they would not mind paying for the art for you. They would not mind sponsoring your work application in the UK, in the US, and so on. But you need to be the top of your field. I would say you look into Europe. Once you become an expert, I would say you look into Europe more than the US because there is a bigger scarcity in Europe and because there are less, um, let me put it this way, there are less opportunities in Europe. However, there are less um, talent also in Europe. And so that leaves the gap and a gateway for you. I hope that helps. Yes, thank you. Thank you. But I think you have not really answered. I said, uh, would you be able to connect in terms of job opportunities abroad? We, we do that um, as well. Part of our global tech program, for example, if you already have the skill, because we have a UK company, for example, um, if you already have the skill, we are able to help with our head on service. And we also have an outsourcing service as well. Right. But only if you are an expert at that level, because that's what the world is looking for. Thank you. All right, I'm coming to you now. Um, 
Shigaze, I'm coming to you. I'm putting you on the spotlight now. Hi, Shigaze. How are you doing? Oh, sorry. I'll ask you to unmute. Yes, so you can unmute yourself now. Um, Chigazi, you, I think your head mouthpiece has an issue. It's really breaking up. Or maybe it's the network itself, but we can't, I can't hear you right now. No, still not. I still can't hear you. Um, what we'll do is maybe let me go to someone else and then hopefully your network will have stabilized and they can come back on stage. Okay, um, if you would like to come on, uh, just raise your hand, switch on your video and then we'll put you on the spotlight and you can ask your question. Uh, Chigo, once you've sorted out your connection, you can just raise your hand again. So that way I can bring you back um, onto the spotlight. All right. Um, reminder, we can't put you on spotlight without your video. So you need to switch on your video. And um, Leo, and then we'll be able to put you on spotlight. OK. Um, you're on spotlight, but it's all black there, but um, I guess maybe there's no power or something. Okay, um, I'm asking you to unmute, so you should be able to unmute yourself now, so good. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We still can can't hear you though. It's all black, but we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, what's your name, sir? Okay, my name is Leo, Leo Magnus. All right, hi, Leo Magnus. How can, we, how can we help you? We can hear you, Leo Magnus. How can we help you? Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, because network issues I was able to Magnus, we can't hear you as well. I know you're saying something around because of network issue, you are not able to hear something. Um maybe adjust your connection or something or um is out okay so i'm coming back to chigazi adding you to the spotlight and then asking you to unmute let's try again chigazi you've not unmuted yourself chigazi if you're speaking you need to unmute Uh, Chigaze, you, oh, okay. Chigaze is out of the room as well. Hopefully he will come back. Okay, so if you would like to ask a question, just as I said, um, switch on your video, raise your hand on Zoom. So that way we will be able to put you on the spotlight and you can ask a question. Welcome to the Emigrate Open Consultation session. And in this session, we didn't bring a guest this edition. Uh, what happens is you are able to ask any question you would like to ask. It may be about our services. It may be about a particular visa opportunity. It may be about your own personal roadmap. Anything you would like to ask. Uh, this is the open consultation session where you can ask those questions. Uh, please remember that this is being recorded. Uh, so um, please bear that in mind as you ask your question. Welcome. We, there are opportunities in the UK, there are opportunities in France with the French tech visa, 
There's opportunity in Canada. So aside from the express entry that most people do, there's also the Canada startup visa. You should Google it. That opportunity exists as well. Uh, in the UK, there's the global talent visa in the UK. There's the startup visa in the UK. There's the innovator visa in the UK. And there are several others as well. Uh, in Europe, a lot of European countries have the digital nomad visa. Uh, it doesn't lead to a pathway to uh, settlement, but it may be a stepping stone to some people as well. So the key point is, depending on your own unique circumstance, we we'll determine what you are targeting. Um, some you already qualify for from today, depending on your circumstance. Some of them, you will need to work towards it. But the question is, do you know what you need to do today for you to qualify in the future for those visa opportunity. What I say to people is that they've already given you the answer script. The answer script is already available in the public domain. The question is, are you able to work yourself towards that answer script over a period of time? It doesn't happen overnight for many of the opportunities. It, they are, um, um, I see someone chatting. Uh, you can't find the raise hand option, but your video is on, so I should be able to put you on spotlight anyway. Um, Emmanuel, I put you on spotlight, and I'm asking you to unmute yourself. So try and unmute yourself. Yeah. So I was saying that these opportunities, there are several of them, and it's up to you to be able to understand what do you want to do. Do you have a dependent or not? it would also impact where you want to go to, particularly at the beginning. Around the MQA community, we, we are also trying to focus on opportunities where you there's a pathway to citizenship, because that's also important in the long run, where you can attain global mobility faster. And so most of the opportunities I've mentioned, aside from the digital nomad one, as a pathway to citizenship. Um, Emmanuel, I see you've unmuted, but we can still hear you. Can you say something? Okay. All Hi, right. good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. How are you doing? Yes. Um, I'm based in Abuja. Uh, I'm a software developer. Okay. I code in um, PHP and Python. Okay. And I also do Java as well. Huh? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Manuel. PHP, Python, oh. you do Java as well. Yes, and, and I have uh, uh, over five years experience in programming. Uh, so based on the options that you run us through, you run us through, uh, which of them do you think I, I stand the better chance on? Which of the visa options and which of the countries should I be looking at? Um, Emmanuel, you're a software developer. Experienced software hires are scarce in every one of the countries we've mentioned and the opportunities across all the different countries. Uh, I'm not able to advise to say, look at this or look at that without much more detail. But for example, in the UK, there's a skilled worker route that you can target. Uh, based on the, and it's based on your experience and level of exposure as well in the field. Um, in the UK, there's the global talent visa and the, um, the requirement for the global talent visa is available on the internet. Uh, you should probably take a look at that and compare your profile as well to say, do I already qualify? Or how far am I from qualification if I don't already qualify? What are the things I should be doing now so that I would qualify for that opportunity as well? Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but if you are more specific, it may be helpful. But asking me to say which country should I target without um, detail is not very um, easy to do. Question I would ask you though is, have you gone to check the requirement of all these visa opportunities that we have displayed so far today? Have you done that? I, I really haven't checked. Um, so, I haven't checked. The first step. Okay, okay, I will, I will check. The first um, step is for you to check. Spend time Research if you are if this is something you really care about, you will spend time 
getting it done. You will spend time um, looking at each one of those opportunities and looking at their requirements and looking at, do I fit into this requirement? Can I fit into this requirement? Now that we have informed you that the opportunity exists, now that we have inspired you that, oh, you can actually qualify for this opportunity, your next action is you go and do your own research because now you know these opportunities exist. Part of the reason why we do emigrate and the reason why we are dedicating our time to this is a lot of people in Africa do not even know these things exist, but you now know they exist. Have you gone to take a look yourself to say, oh, let me Google it. What are they asking for? And so on. In addition, part of what we do with the emigrate is that we bring people that have taken the different tracks that I've mentioned and we have different guests. So we've had guests that have gotten the Global Talent Visa. We've had guests that have gotten the EB1 Visa, EB2 Visa. We've had guests that have gone through the graduate assistant route in the US. We've had guests that have done different, uh, different things. And so it's up to you to then pick to say, oh, this is what I'm targeting. If you're a scholar, for example, maybe the graduate assistant route may be good for you. A scholar is someone that went out, came out with first class. In, the, uh, in university, for example, that may be something or 2-1 or I-2-1 and things like that. So there are different opportunities depending on your own unique circumstance. That's the best I can do. Um, does that help? Yeah, yes, yes, it was helpful. Uh, I, I'll look at the, 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 the various options. Uh, I'll look at them and then decide on which one to go for. Thank you very much. Also stay connected to the emigrate community because part of what we do in the emigrate community is we'll keep informing. Um, over time, some of these will be paid because there's a cost to it. And we'll be bringing other consultants um, within the emigrate um, ecosystem. But while these opportunities are still free, we think that you should make the very best use of all the opportunities available um, to you. I know somebody was asking us to share this slide again. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this slide and then you can go do your research around some of these opportunities that do exist um, today. Okay, we have time for only two more people uh, to come on the spotlight to ask questions. So if you would like to be one of those, you can raise your hand. Um, Chigozi, is your internet better? If you raise your hand, we can put you on spotlight. Um, we have space for two more people. So if you would like to ask a question. All right. Um, we'll also ask that please be your brother's keeper and share these opportunities with your brother, with people around you. Help us share the message because many people do not know these opportunities exist. Some of you in this call today probably only found out about some of these opportunities um, within the immigrant community. And so share it on your DP. You don't have to share I mean, yes, tell them about emigrate, but also tell them about opportunities that could change their life as well. Be your brother's keeper. All right, Jose, I'm, I'm asking you to unmute. Let's see if we can, it's better now. Um, it's still breaking up, but uh, please go ahead. It's still breaking up, but you can. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, could you switch off your video and try again? Switch off your video and try. You're already on spotlight now, so I, you can switch off your. Video. Okay, try and speak again. Maybe it will be better. Okay. 
Uh, I can manage. Keep talking. Yeah, keep talking. I can keep out your words. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about the. Sorry about the. I. about the DevOps uh, and the ASO. Actually, actually it's interesting in that area because I'm, I'm also a network engineer. I'm, I'm in the telecommunication sector. So I don't know if there's anything available for someone at my, someone of my sectors as a telecommunication engineer. Or if I need to add, up, add it up with, uh, maybe with uh, maybe ASO, ASO, ASO or, or, or probably the, the the DevOps. So, what do you what would you, what would you advise? Um, uh, Chigo, uh, Chigo, my understanding of your question is that you're a telecoms engineer, and um, you are trying to find out to say, um, what can you do, and is there um, are there opportunities available to you? The answer is yes, there are opportunities available to telecom engineers. However you need to be highly skilled. And so the question is, are you highly skilled? All right, uh, and that's, that's the key thing. Now, in addition, you may also want to just propose your skill towards where there's a lot of scarcity at this point, a lot, which is cloud hosting engineer, a lot of scarcity exists because most organizations are moving to the cloud. They are moving their core infrastructure to the cloud and there are less and less data centers to manage, right? So if you are not, if you are not able to get into Facebook or get into Google or get into Microsoft and so on, then you will, it will be very difficult for you to find, you understand that many of those are very competitive. And so if you are able to show that you have the knowledge, then what happens is that many organizations that are using those kinds of cloud hosting will be looking for you to manage their infrastructure for them. Um, so that's that's a much I know. Um, and just take a look at your field and then take a look at how you can keep growing in your field as well. What I will also do is I'm going to be sharing my screen now and I will show you some of the requirements available in public domain for the technician visa, for example. And with that one, it may also give you an idea, some of the things that you may want to be focusing on as well. So I'm sharing my screen now. And um, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, All right. So some of these um, some of these skills are the ones that the UK government have said that these skills are where they are scarce and they want exceptional talents, people with exceptional technical skills, in these right? And this is in the public domain as well. You can go online to take a look at it. Please note that they didn't say that these are all the skills. That these are all the skills. Right, these are just indicative, these are just indicative of what is of what is required. What one is of the things required. technician, for example, for one 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 is on. so hopefully uh, was I able to help? Yes, uh you were able to help in some area, but uh, one other question I want to ask is uh like I said earlier, I came in late. Um, during this slide, I think when I came in, uh, you were talking about um, um, your company sponsoring a training or something like that, that after a year or two, something like, I didn't get that too well. All right, so that training is called the Bincom Global Tech Program. And what we do with the Bincom Global Tech Program is that we are able to uh, take you from whatever level you are, to the point where you start earning high paying job in the field of technology. So 
they focus on you learning skills and if you already have those skills you gaining real life experience because the skills without experience is really nothing is captain local host and also the right exposure because all those three key things are required in the field of technology and what we do is that the fee for the program is 1.2 million naira however we are able to invest in in specific candidates such that it's only when you start earning high paying that you then start paying the fee the school fees for the program and if you already have the skill and what you are looking for is experience this program is also for you because then we are able to focus on you gaining the right kind of experience that is required at your next level okay i think that's clear enough okay what is the duration of the programs it's one to two years and one year minimum uh maximum of two years Right. So it depends on how quickly you are able to adapt. It also depends on what level you are today in terms of skill, experience and exposure. We determine where we can get you to within that one to two year period. There's a lot of work to do. You need to be able to dedicate 40 hours a week or 20 hours. Uh, yeah, 40 hours a week. You need to be able to dedicate um, to the program. So it's not like um, you need to dedicate that time to your own personal development. Okay, one more, and then um, I think I've even run out of time. Um, we can take one more quick question before I will just give a quick summary. Um, uh, was it recorded? Can I get the recording later? Yes, you. it's been recorded. The link has just been dropped in the chat. I advise that you copy the link now because the recordings of our sessions are usually only made available to our premium community members. So I've sent the link to the video just now in the chat. You can copy that immediately uh, because um, later on you may be asked to pay to get the link. So it's freely available now, copy it now, not later. Um, a few questions from the immigrant community I'll quickly answer. Can a dependent of a student visa apply for the tech visa? I, suggest, I suspect the person is asking around tech nation visa and the answer is yes. Um, a student visa holder, in fact, we know of people who got the tech nation visa while they were still on student visa as well. So it is possible and it's up to you to make sure that you qualify already for that visa. One of the things people don't realize, I mean, many people right, right now are doing masters in the UK for the purpose of settlement and all. And the problem is that student visa does not have a pathway to settlement. Even the post-study, two years post-study does not have a pathway to settlement. And so what you need to do is that you need to quickly get into one of the visa types that already has a pathway to settlement. And that's something many people do not realize and there are people that have had to go back to their own country nigeria ghana and so on because they did not get work sponsorship and so on so please bear that in mind when you are taking a decision on how you want to go with your journey um discussion on entry level developers for relocating i believe we've already spoken a bit about that and um, hopefully we, we touched on that well enough. And then somebody is asking about how do I become a premium member? Uh, there's a link on, on my screen, which you can see details around uh, the different premium offerings that we have um, in Emigrate. You can take a look at that screen and uh, that link, and then you can indicate interest. And from there, you'll be able to, um, you'll be contacted by one of my colleagues who is able to also guide you into what it is that you need at every point in time, both for the free services we do have and the premium services we do have as well. Uh, summary is this, there's a lot of opportunity available out there. Those opportunities are for you because you are a talent and these countries are looking for talents such as yourself to help them build their economy you pay taxes in their country, they are not doing you a favor. They really just need talents to come and create jobs, create employment, 
build innovation, and so on. The visa is a pathway and is a side effect of you being globally attractive. Don't forget that when you get to your, your destination country, you will still need to earn income. You will still need to um, you will still need to be able to have living expense and all of those kind of things. So it's best for you to have the right skill now so that you can land high paying jobs at that level at that time, rather than you getting there and first having to do janitor or any of those kind of things just to be able to pay your school fees or just to get by. You don't need that because you're in the field of technology. And because if you build the right skill, you will be earning more than average salary in any country because of that skill. And that's the summary for today. If you're interested in any of our own services, um, please, uh, you, can click, you can go to the link on the screen. And some of our services includes information, includes coaching, includes handholding, includes strategy, consultation, advisory, and even we're building a community of like-minded people as well. Many of these we do for free. And so you don't have to think about it twice for you to be able to do many of these. Take advantage of that. But if you need some of the premium offerings as well, they are available to you. We also ask that please, please, please tell other people about these opportunities that do exist right now. Um, some of these opportunities won't be there forever, by the way, right? These opportunities are there because there's scarcity. And so the sooner you take action, the better for you. Something else you should realize is that they've given you the answer script. They've told you what the question will be, the question paper that they want to assess you on. The question is, are you working towards ensuring that you do qualify either now or in the future? For those of us that already qualify for this visa type, some people do get rejected because they did not package their application correctly. They did not tell their story in the way that the assessors want to see or hear about the story. And that's something else that you should know that please ask for help so that you don't make mistakes. One of the last speaker in the Emigrate Open Day spoke about why he got rejected and what he did differently for him to then be accepted just one year later with almost identical documents really. But the key point is part of his own problem was that he didn't put his application in the way that would have gotten him the endorsement. And he understood that when he finally got the endorsement, if you missed that open day session, it was really, really informative. Please go back and watch the session. And so if you already qualify, either as talent, some of our community members that have 10 years experience, 20 years experience, head of IT and so on, if you already qualify, what's stopping you from applying? The worst case is you get feedback for you to keep working. The best case is that you can get an endorsement that will probably change your life and the life of your family, depending on what it is that you're doing. And there are other opportunities as well for working remotely and so on. For some of us that are um, on student visa and trying to figure out, oh, what's the next step I need to take? This is These are some of those opportunities as well, but you need to start planning for those opportunities. Some of you as well on student visa, you are actually skilled. And so rather than you thinking of yourself as a student, maybe you should think of yourself as a professional who is on a student visa and then you're applying for the right visa, uh, you're applying for the right job in the right economy for you as well. For those of us that are beginners, just getting into the field of technology, or you have already been in the field for a, a little while, but then you are wondering what you should be doing next. Build your skill right now. As quickly as possible, become an expert. You can become an expert in six months to one year, really, if you put your mind at it. You won't be experienced, but you may be an expert, right? Experience takes time everywhere in the world. There's no, there's no rigmarole around it. But if you, if you expose yourself to the right kind of work, you may also be building that experience faster than your peers. And that will land you at a higher pedestal for you to be able to do other things. For those of us four years, five years, six years in the field of technology, you already have some of those skills. You already have some experience as well. You may want to check your level of exposure 
and make sure that it also matches, or at least it's going to match in the, in the, in the shortest possible time. Several things for you to do. One of the things we help with is a roadmap to say, this is where you are right now. This is what you are targeting. This is the road to get there. The road may, never, may not be smooth, but at least you know where you are going. And when you see that things are deviating, you will be able to focus on getting to the right place. Some have to change jobs. You may need to take a 20% pay cut, for example, for you to work in the right environment, for you to take the next step. Key point is that, do you have the right information? And then are you taking action with the information that you do have as well? On screen are some of the things that we help members of our community with, and we hope that you would take action and also make sure you take charge of your career growth and your personal growth because your family is depending on it as well. Thank you so much for joining us for this evening's session. The next Emigrate Open Day is going to be on October, the third Wednesday in October will be the next Emigrate Open Day and we'll be speaking with another inspirational global talent from the United Kingdom. And then in November, we'll be having somebody from Germany um, a software developer who has relocated to Germany will be speaking to us in November as well. And um, we should be having the French, um, somebody from France also speaking to us about opportunities in France before the year runs out. And there's so much more. Please take plug to the emigrate community. Also tell people about the emigrate as well. Uh, tell people about these opportunities, tell them about emigrate and tell them because you may be helping and you may be changing their lives. Thank you and good night.